Long, tough game today against Gunai Mamadzada. Looked like you were winning. What happened? Yeah, uh, it was a crazy, crazy game. Um, I played a kind of new idea in the London opening. Got a really nice position. She fought back, but then she got really low on time. And then I thought I was very close to winning, but then I blundered. And I thought I was losing, but then she blundered. And then it was close to equal. But then we got to the end game, and then I was better, and then I was completely winning, and then I blundered, and then it was a draw. That's a lot of chapters yeah. to this particular book. Pretty sure we could write a whole book on this game. Yeah, so. okay. And at the end, it was that rook and pawn ending. You just missed that one move when you played f5. Yep. Yeah, um, it's painful, but mm -hmm. also instructive, and goes to show kind of what I need to work on to get to the next level. Going back to the beginning of the game, of course, it was a London system you played here. Back in the day, that was regarded as a super solid system, but a lot of grandmasters are playing it these days, aren't they? Yeah, London, it has a reputation of being very simple and solid. Um, also has a reputation of being, of being a beginner's opening, where it's very easy to learn. You just kind of memorize the setup and you play it. But at a high level, it's very venomous, and there's still kind of new ideas uh, being found, especially with uh, the engines. Um, I got to play one of these ideas in the game, pushing my H-pawn as early as move seven to get a, a pretty substantial attack. Okay, let's look at the game. Okay. Okay, Eric, we're looking at the final stages of your game with uh, Gunai Mamadzada today. Tell us what happened next. Yeah, um, it's going to be a little bit painful for me to relive this moment because I fought for over four hours to get to this position, which should be a completely uh, winning endgame for whites. Uh, it's very typical when you have two connected passers against one passer. Uh, as long as you don't blunder anything, uh, it's winning. Unfortunately, in this position, I played a move which just gives away my whole advantage. Um, so before we show it, pause the video. Uh, no. If you're watching on YouTube in the future, wait to move and don't blunder and find a, a way to win. Um, I think any, anything really, uh, I can play here, just any king move, rook b8, but the move I played was pawn to f5. And uh, this is one thing I, I shouldn't do is have my pawn separated, especially when black can exploit me. And uh, after she played rook to b4, mm -hmm. my had that sinking feeling in my stomach. So I realized, oh no, the king is getting to e5. Yeah, to e5. And um, yeah, Lawrence Trent told me after the game that this is already a draw. So right. I tried to fight, but uh, yeah, uh, what to do. <laughs> see a couple of moves just to see. Yep, king so three. the point Which is the king gets to e5. e5. And uh, got to defend it. Yeah, when I play e4, the rook can't take on e4 because rook e7 check, but the problem is rook b3. And black is winning the e4 pawn. And amazingly, she's just in time to draw the ending. Um, I think she saves it by one tempo because even though my pawn is further past after rook to b1, uh, her rook kind of comes from behind and starts giving checks, and then her king is just close enough to walk towards a pawn. So what happened in the game, king g5, king d4 is a really nice move, and um, she can essentially just save the pawn with the king and then eventually sack the rook for the f-pawn, yeah. and uh, yeah, this is a draw. Four hours down the drain. But yeah, I mean, it was a really interesting fight. We just looked at the... Uh, yeah. The very, uh, very end, but uh, I mean, the opening, the middle game was uh, really exciting. So it's going to be a, a fun game to analyze, but uh, I think now it's time for me to rest and try and regroup for tomorrow. Okay, thanks very much, Eric. Thank you.